Welcome back to more factoring brought to you by grade 11 pre-calculus Manitoba curriculum. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what did I say about liking uh, factoring? Guess what, folks? There's even more. Now, if you hear beeping in the background, do not worry. It is just one of my uh, many laptops in the laptop cart just beeping at me. So don't worry about me. I'm okay. All right, back to math. Now, when you first approach this question here, a lot of people instinctually want to expand this out. Okay, they want to say, oh, x plus 2 squared is x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then they want to use the 12 to distribute to all three terms, just like they would want to distribute the 24. That is a whole stink ton of algebra. I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of a strategy, so um, an algebraic strategy actually, uh, so that you will have to actually use less algebra. It's called substitution. Use substitution. So first things first, I'm going to define my variable. Let z equal x. So I am every single time, oh sorry, x plus 2. So every single time I see x plus 2, I'm going to write z. So 12z squared, because I'm saying x plus 2, right? x plus 2 is squared, so that means that z is squared, plus 24. x plus 2, oh, no, because x plus 2 is just z, plus 9. hey -o. That I can do. This makes my head hurt. This, even though we get to a big number here, right, we need to make sure that it multiplies to 108 and adds up to 24. We still have the skills. Okay, so let's go to 108 and let's see what the factors are. So 1, 108, 2, and 54, uh, 3, and 36, 4 and 27, 5, uh, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and oh, that's how you know to stop, right? because they've just flipped sides. So let's see which ones. We know that it has to multiply out to positive. Okay, so they're either both negative or both positive. But since the sum has to be 24, we know that it has to be both positive. And ding, 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 ding! I do believe those are our winners. So we have 12z squared plus 6z plus 18z plus 9. And we're just going to factor out the greatest common factor here, which is 6z. So 6z is 2z plus 1 plus 9 here, 9, 2z plus 1. Now I did that very fast, but 18z divided by 9 is 2z, 9 divided by 9 is 1. So I like this because I have the 2z plus 1 both times. So what I can do here is I can say 6z plus 9 times 2z plus 1. Hey, wait a minute. What I could have done at this stage of the game right here is factor out a 3 because the greatest common factor would be 3. 3 goes into all of these, um, uh, all of these evenly. But I can take out my 3 right here. That's totally fine. I'm saying 3, and then I'm just going to factor it out of this first uh, factor. So that becomes 2z plus 3, 2z plus 1. And now, since I have z's, I can substitute back my z for x plus 2. Because just like if I ask for a question to be done in fract like in fractions, I expect my answer to be in fractions. If I ask my question with x's, I expect my answer to have x's. So at this point, what we can do is we can substitute back. So we get 3, and then 
I'm going to use the square brackets again just because we're going to have to um, write some things in. So 2 times x, x plus, x plus 2, plus 3. So I'm writing the exact same thing as this uh, bracket here. But instead of z, I'm writing x plus 2 because I'm substituting it back. Now this one, 2 times z, but instead of z, I'm going to put x plus 2. 2 times x plus 2 plus 1. Do, do, do. 3 times, and I'm going to revert back because I will not need two sets of brackets. So I'm going to distribute this 2 with happy little rainbows. 2 x plus 4 plus 3, 2x plus 4, and then the 3 is just the same. And here I have happy little rainbows again. 2 times x is 2x, two, 2 times 2 is plus 4, and then I have plus 1. Great! Now I have some like terms here that I can clean up, 4 plus 3 and 4 plus 1. So I have 3 times 2x plus 7, 2x plus 5, and I'm done. Phew! See what I mean? Can you imagine, though, if we expanded that, made it bigger, like this is a lot of work still, but it would be way more work if you would be dealing with, say, something like, you know, seven terms. Whew. All right. So let's go to this one here. Oh, look, sneak preview, difference of squares. <laughs> so let's see what's common to these two things here. We have a 3 minus 4, oh, sorry, 3x minus 4 and a 3x minus 4. I do believe that I'm going to let, and I'm going to pick another letter here. I'm going to say P equal 3x minus 4. So we want to substitute this um, 3x plus 4, uh, or this P for our 3x plus 4 to clean it up a bit. So we have 6p squared, because 3x plus 4 is p, so 6p squared minus 21p squared, whoops, nope, 21p plus 15. Now, I'm not going to fall into the same trap as I did in the first, uh, the first example. I'm going to factor out a common factor here, which would be 3. So 3 times 2p squared minus 7p plus, uh, not 15, but 5. So we have a complex, uh, we have a complex number here, uh, or it's not a complex number, that's something totally different. You uh, might get to that in university. Um, it's a number that's half imaginary and half real. Ooh, fun. Um, <laughs> so we need to come up with two numbers that uh, multiply out to 10 and add up to negative 7. Well, I do declare that I think those two numbers are negative 5 and negative 2, because negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. Negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. So 3 times 2 p squared minus 5p minus 2 minus 5. Oh, sorry, minus 2p minus 5. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this 3 times square bracket. So I'm going to see what's common between these two things. Okay, these two terms. And it's just p, 2p minus 5. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 1. Now, I usually wouldn't do this, but I find this really helpful. I know that all the mathematicians are going to laugh at me, point their creepy little fingers and laugh at me, but I know ultimately it will be for my own good. But before I move on, look at what I messed up here, guys. So make sure that you fix this. See how this is a plus? And I carried it through as a negative. It should be plus. Okay? So I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from negative 2p, so that becomes positive 2 p. And I'm going to divide uh, 5 by negative 1. It's minus 5 
And usually what I would do is I wouldn't have a placeholder here, right? I wouldn't have the one. So then I would be like, well, what do I do? The coefficient in front of this factor is going to be one. So I can just, I can just put that there. So that equals three times 2p minus 5, because that's what's common to both terms. Or, um, bo yeah, both terms. And then the factored out part is going to be p minus 1. Now, if I ask my question with x's, I expect my answer to have x's. So I'm going to say 3 square bracket 2 times p, but we know that p is 3x minus 4. Minus 5 square brackets, another square bracket. P is just going to be 3x minus 4 minus 1. So then that equals, I'm just going to, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. 3 times 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 minus 5. And then this one I can just drop the brackets, 3x minus 4 minus 1. Now I'm going to collect those like terms, those constants. So I have 3 times 6x minus 13. And then I have 3x minus 5. And I'm done! So, in summary here, folks, whenever you see... If I can zoom out here. Whenever you see um, expressions that look a little bit too big for their britches, okay, what I mean is they look a little bit too complicated, see if you can use substitution. Because if it's something that's the same in both, and one's a squared and one is not, we can easily substitute it with another letter, factor it, and then substitute it back.